What's a cafe cowboy? Did the Tun Up Boys really drink tea? Why are we so fascinated by old bikes? Kick stands up, hit it. Bike Custom. America's sexiest custom bikes. I'm CC Bobber and this is I Custom. Well, when things get too modern, too digital, it's nice to look back. Back to the 50s and 60s, when thousands of teenagers found their freedom and started a revolution on two wheels. The rest was history, and here's Mark Wilsmore from the Ace Cafe in London to tell us all about it. It's post-World War II, Britain, it's tough times, but there's a baby boom generation, a whole, whole new demographic of youngsters growing up. Those youngsters had work. With that work, they had some money. And they went out with that little bit of money they had and bought the fastest vehicles they could afford. And back then, that was a motorbike in Britain. And they bought them in their thousands. There were no speed limits on the roads. There were speed limits in town, 30 miles an hour, but there were no speed limits anywhere else. The famous Ace Cafe in London was the birthplace for the ultra-cool Cafe Cowboys, also called the Tun-Up Boys. Today, we're going to follow the build of the Ace Cafe Thruxton, a modern-day cafe racer, right here at South Bay Triumph. All right, baby. You ready for this? We're going to do you up. That'll be nice. Come on. Tie you up and do horrible things to you tonight. Okay, I'm gonna strap you down. Don't worry, you'll enjoy it. I'll be gentle. What we have here is 2010 stock Thruxton. Sweet. 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 What's the plan, Governor? We're gonna turn it into a duck hunter. Duck season, I think, is gonna be in July this year. Yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. Totally awesome, Governor. Not for the ducks, though. Upside down fork on it, dual disc brakes, Olin suspension in the rear, custom exhaust, custom paint, custom turn signals. Just going to change it all around. That sounds wicked. It's going to be fast. It's going to handle. We're going to get into this motor, do some porting and polishing to that head, bore out some throttle bodies, stiffer clutch springs. Barnett racing clutch, some wild cams, some nice high compression pistons. It's gonna be fun. Let's go. Take me with you, love. Typically, these kids, they would meet at cafes on fast bits of road at the edge of town. And then you have three, four, five guys together, 17 year olds or 40 year olds, uh, uh, and it's, it's bragging. Who's the fastest, who's the best? So these kids would race each other on these roads with no speed limits, and invariably, carnage would ensue. Yeah, maybe you didn't know, Ace Cafe is coming to America. And that's what we're building, 904 Thruxton Cafe Racer. I customized about 30 Thruxtons so far. I did one that was out at Willow Springs last week. He actually uh, won the race. Performance-wise for handling, suspension is key. Your rake angle, the way your suspension is set up. It's all engineering. I work for Matt Capri. He sits at his desk and figures all that stuff out for me. And then he comes out here and tells me to put it together. 170. Things start happening. If you're not sitting right, or if the bike is not put together right, the wheels aren't right, or you have the fairing, if it's a fair bike, if it's cocked a couple, you'll start to go off course. Because you, you know, you don't ride these bikes, you're just on them. <laughs> Yeah, no control. You've got a new bike, or a second-hand bike, how to make it go faster, or at least look like it goes faster, or sound like it goes faster. So you're gonna change cans. You're gonna put the bars down here. Because the bulk of your peer group, 16, 17, 18, 19, it's who's fastest. When we get into our 20s and 30s, we all start, oh man, this is cool, this is, Nothing to do with that. It's to do with speed. I'll race you. I'll race you from the bottom here to the top and back, and I'll beat you. Ripping you off, your skin off here, baby. 
You're gonna be bare ass naked. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Oh man, yeah. I was one of those kids that took all my toys apart, try to figure out how they work, put them back together. Right. Sometimes I couldn't. <laughs> well, there hasn't ever been one done like this, so uh, it's gonna be kind of interesting. These are great motors though. Talk about an under stress motor. You know, stock, this thing's what, mid 50 horsepower. We've pumped them up to almost 300 now. 300 horsepower. Bloody hell! Back in the 60s, I guess, I raced in my Triumph in school. Yeah. 2T Special, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, race, we used to race on the street to, in New York for money every oh, night. Okay. Not for pink slips. We, we weren't that brave, but maybe okay. for $50 a shot, which was about a week's work back then. How do you make it so fast? You start, you go talk to car guys and you, li you listen. You don't talk too much, just listen. And you start. The trick is to separate the BS from the real stuff. If you can kind of quarterback the information and try it on your own, mm -hmm. then after a while you become the expert because you've talked to all different people. Mm -hmm. I mean, the cylinder head guy does his job and the tire guy does his job and you put all this together for the bike you're working on and then, then it's your applicant, then, then you become the expert because you've done it all. I used to have all the drag quarter miles and horsepowers memorized. Of course, I didn't have my history all memorized and stuff from school, but boy, I sure had motorcycles down. <laughs> Jolly good. I custom. I'm a motorbike rider and I ride real fast. Hey, John, how was the ride, huh? I still got a buzz from it. <laughs> Coming up, Cafe Cowboys and Smoking Up the Shop. I custom. We have found that women who drink tea during their first trimester of pregnancy will pass on the British cafe racer gene to their child. Do we have modern day cafe cowboys? Darling, this is what we found out. Hey, this is Ricky Rocket, and this is the Brit Iron Rebels. The type of riding we do, the kind of motorcycles we like, the kind of music we like, it all fits in with that group. I'm a true Brit Iron Rebel. <laughs> they all laugh, but they're all yanks, they don't understand. Everything I've had has been a cafe racer. I think in high school I grabbed the old Honda 305 or something and threw ace bars on it and sprayed it down uh, flat black. We like to go fast. I like to go fast. <laughs> I love that. I caught the wild one, saw a Triumph and decided that that's the bike I wanted to own someday. Things rattle and shake. Take John here today. Oh, my air filter fell off and it's leaking fuel all over the place. Right, and his <laughs> Norton Commando, it broke down twice. This is what happens in the real world. It's all part of the show, man. <laughs> Never a dull moment. I'm a Brit Iron Rebel. Finally. You know, when you ride a Brit bike, you know that you have a motorcycle between your legs. It vibrates, it spits at you, it, it smokes. New machines with, you know, old styling and old machines with new parts. And it's like that, it's, it's about that styling, really. I custom. Yeah, it looks like we're doing a cooking show here, huh? Yeah, we're gonna cook up some horsepower. What can I say? You know, motorcycling, it's, you're being a god of power. It takes six days to build a bike and then you ride on the 7th. Amen to that, Reverend. Stock displacement is 865. We're popping it up to 904. Next thing on the menu here is the 904 pop-up pistons. This is where the horsepower really comes into play. We got some big high lift cams in there. The intakes are uh, bored. Notice we clean up the exhaust ports as well. And then of course we go big valves on there and clean it all up. 
That is a recipe for horsepower. Now that just makes me hungry. A lot of guys just like to build, you know, mm -hmm. work a couple, three months in the wintertime back east when it's cold and get, and get ready for spring. And just that's what, you, that's what you do, you know, once you get it going. Get through the rules and get the butterflies settled in, you know. Don't throw up anymore before your race, kind of settle yourself down. You know, when you get near 175, 180, things start happening pretty interesting. And when you hit 200 miles an hour, it's kind of an achievement that not many guys have done that. So you're into a very exclusive club. And then you feel like you've, you did something you contributed because it takes a lot of research to do that. It's not about being brave, it's about being smart. Now, generally kids just get on and do what kids do, what, you know, what guys do as youngsters. Get together, have fun. It may annoy older people. It may annoy them to the extent that the police get involved. When it gets to that sort of stage, generally people then label youngsters with something. And in England, back in the 50s, people tearing around the roads of England with no speed limits in place, and all these kids, overwhelmingly, I might add, all wore crash helmets before they were a legal requirement. Because they knew they were going fast, for one. And more importantly, crash helmet was seen as a cool thing. It was the jet age. You look like a jet fighter pilot with one. I've got a crash helmet. It was the, the social statement. But society, the newspapers and the, the TV and the radio, would then label them ton-up boys, the ton being hunted. All they want to do is go as fast as they can. And the kids say, yeah, that's right, I'm a tonic boy. So, what's cooking there, Chef Jeff? Yeah, this definitely has to be down to the thousands, because if this ring should get hot and expand and come together and then put pressure on the outside of the cylinder, then we're going to have a problem. It's going to score the cylinder, we're going to lose power, lose compression, and it's not going to be good. We're not going to win any races, so... Okay, now it's time to take all these ingredients we have back here and cook up some power. Take all these performance parts, put them all together, start building the beast. Well, the whole, the whole thing with speed is the buzz of the adrenaline and the thrill of finding the edge, the edge where if you go over it, you're in deep trouble. Either physically, because you've gone into something, come off the road or um, physically perhaps again because you, 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 you run into the police. So the buzz is found in adrenaline. All you need then is a tea or a cola or something. You, you're not just not interested in alcohol. Coming up, Laughing with Lexi and Piston Power. Do we have any Harley riders in the crowd? Yeah! I was racing a Harley today. Yeah! In some real twisty canyons up in the mountains. It was so hard to keep up with the Harley's torque and horsepower. Yeah! I inched my way closer and closer in every turn. Oh. My only chance to pass him was in a curve. Oh. In a long sweeper, I managed to come up right next to him. He looked at me very surprised as I slowly passed him. And once I was down on a straight again, I expected he would just fly by me. But to my surprise, it took a little while actually. Oh boy, what an adrenaline rush. Yeah. I have never pedaled that fast in my whole life. Yeah. I custom. This one's gonna be a little sweeter. Ding. <laughs> there it goes. High performance piston time. You have to you get those records. Those guys have been tinkering before you get there. So you look in a rule book, you see where you are, you're like 20 miles an hour below the record. You go, well, God, what am I going to do to get here now? Because I don't know. You don't know anything. Now, we make sure we take all of our pistons and the wrist pin and the clips and the rings and we weigh it all together and get a match set. Get the little arrows facing forward. I used to have a bike that would start backwards. When you dump the clutch on that, boy, that would give you a surprise once in a while. Backwards? Now really, Jeff. It's funny how the high performance stuff always goes together better than the, than the factory stuff. 
Let me get my handy dandy trusty ring compressors out. These are special. You see a little bit of ring sticking out there. We gotta get make sure all that's tucked up in there. It's never done. That sounds absolutely exhausting. Well, it's done. If you want, if you want it to be done, it's done. Like next year, we decided as of yesterday, Triumph's going to give me a new bike to go to Bonneville in 012. So we're going to take the uh, Thunderbird uh, Storm and go after some of the Harley Davidson records, 1,700 cc's, maybe 2,000 cc's. Those records, uh, FIM records, aren't that difficult. They're slower than our one liter bike that went 156 when Alan rode it last year. But I think we can get that bike to go maybe 175, maybe. The record's 143, it's just gonna be a cakewalk on that one. The 59 Club and its history is quite remarkable in as much an Anglican priest who was in his 40s and a very keen motorcyclist. The club itself was founded in 1959 as a youth club. I'd say kids, sort of 14 year olds, could go and listen to rock and roll. Pubs didn't play the music, there weren't clubs. You could only hear it on jukeboxes in cafes. Get the ton up boys down here from the caf, the ace. And eventually he does, he goes to the cafe, hands out a, a leaflet, inviting those there to come to his church for a blessing of the bikes. But because it was in the national newspapers the next day, with in essence the priest being lampooned, the kids sided with him and join the club in their thousands from all across the country. I want you to take a careful look at this head. Now this is a Thruxton head, but look, no shims. Shim is under bucket. Now you think, why would you do that? Why would you take a simple design head and put these big old car buckets in there with the shims underneath? Because watch. This gives us more sweep area, so we can roll this lobe off the edge of the cam and catch it all the way through. Under bucket? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. All right. And there's still a little oil in there, huh? Okay, cut, there's a lot of oil. Come on, I need to get to the oil pan. Ooh, we're making a mess, huh? <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, we already started working on the blooper reel. <laughs> Just add some vinegar, love. We'll have a motorbike salad dressing. Make sure you always torque in the proper torquing sequence. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it's in the book. <laughs> Coming up, curve appreciation and Thruxton delights. I custom. In Germany, it's the Autobahn long and straight. In England, it's all about country curvy roads. Well now, it's time for Curve Appreciation. After all those curves, I'm going to have to try to think straight again. Let's check back in with the Ace Cafe Racer. Hey guys, today we're over at Mickey Cohen Motorsports. We're going to do some final tuning on this bike here and uh, do, put it on the dyno, get a Power Commander a good tune. You, know, you do all these engine modifications, the standard uh, computer can't keep up, so we've got to get it more fuel and get the fuel curve right, the timing curve. You do all that with the Power Commander. Now, will it run? 
he's dead. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Well, we're going for maximum fuel efficiency here. Maximum power, maximum torque. All right, the bike is warmed up. Mickey's in there on the dyno. He's gonna start laying in a map. It's gonna get a little loud here. Ooh, make it loud, love. Running good and everything, it's ready to go. Got to put on some the proper body work. Take it for a ride. All right, back in from the dyno. Now get it dressed up, Jeff. That actually doesn't taste too bad. So wicked, let's go for a ride. Man, I sure hope I tighten those caliper bolts up. Matt Capri built this machine. He's a guy with Bonneville experience and success. His business, if I'm not mistaken, is on the PCH South Bay Triumph. And it's a, a fantastic ride, a lot of punch, I haven't ridden it on the freeway, I've just enjoyed the curves on Mulholland. Thank you, Matt. It's great. I custom. Well, that's all the classic fun we have time for. Check out iCustom next time when we promise to rock you. Peace. <laughs>